What's good, beautiful people? This is The Kitchen Table. My name is Clay Hodges. Charlene Michelle. Cher. And Willie is out on vacation again. He is in Jamaica, y'all. This man is Jamaica. He gonna have to tell us all about his escapades when he come yes. back. Yes. Uh, he's been but everywhere. He's he been everywhere. But beautiful people, this is The Kitchen Table. For those who don't know, this is a show, a podcast powered by Fat Vegan, baby. If you're hey. listening to it on YouTube, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. And if you're not listening to it, make sure you just subscribe to the channel anyway, because we appreciate you. And we want you to be up to date with all the content that we got coming for y'all. So for those who are just getting introduced to the kitchen table, at the table, we give you a feast, a full three course meal. We got the entree, the appetite, oh, excuse me, the entree. Sorry. We got, I'm, I'm messing up y'all. Lord has been one of those mornings. Hey. We got the appetizer, the entree, the dessert, and we give you a to-go box. That's how we do it at the kitchen table, y'all. So hit me. What we got for the appetizer this morning, ladies? Um, well, on a serious note, the inauguration happened. Um, did you guys watch? I, I didn't. Know. I watched. I didn't watch it, but I did watch Old Girl with the poem. I, I watched her. I ain't gonna lie. That was dope. She yeah, did her I thing. I forgot her name, though, but she dope, though. Like, she... Her poem was hard, bro. Like it was real intellectual. It was real precise. Her word play and word uses mm -hmm. was really cool. Like I was like, okay, I see you, little sis. I see you. <laughs> Y'all ain't seen it either. I didn't. Mm -hmm. no. I'm I watched. Well, I woke up too late, and then I just didn't really care. I mean, I did obviously, but I I didn't really. <laughs> So right, right. I right. woke when I woke up, I was just watching like the highlights. And then of course, like for me, whenever a big event happens, I just love getting on Twitter and seeing mm. what black Twitter has to say about it. And of course, they was talking about Michelle's hair. That was a whole topic. <laughs> um, and then <laughs> so I don't know if you guys have noticed, but like the whole joke about George Bush being in love with Michelle Obama. So like they were bringing <laughs> that up and I, I seen that. What's that whole joke about? I didn't get it. Okay, so back during the Obamas and through the years, like there's always pictures of George Bush like with Michelle, or he always <laughs> finds her, or he'll give her like candy at a funeral. <laughs> and it's just been they've been pictured over the years because every time like George Bush just looks so happy to be with Michelle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they're friends. They actually are friends, but it's just funny because it's the most unlikely friendship. People don't think they would be friends and they are. And she says, you know, they may have different political views, but they have the same values. That's what she right, says. Right, right, right. Um, but it's just hilarious because every event, George Bush is always going to find Michelle. Always find Michelle. <laughs> always. always. He's going to make sure he greet Michelle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's he loves funny. her. <laughs> Charlie, why you ain't watch it? I had no interest. <laughs> You'll keep it simple. I have no interest. I feel that. <laughs> and I feel that. Hey, who was what was that uh lady that you was talking about that had said something about yellow bones? Oh Danny Lee. Da is that how you say her name? We were just debating that. Sorry, Danny, if we saying your name wrong. Yeah. So basically, the drama is that she came out with a new song. And she called herself a yellow bone in the song. And she said the N-word in the song. But the gag is that she's not black. <laughs> like at all. Well, but she, she's, but she's, she's Dominican. She's Dominican. That's where the lines get blurred. Because it can be Afro-Dominican or you can be white identifying Dominican. And I don't know which one she is. That's what they said. I don't know. Yeah. This is just what black people yeah, are telling me. Right, but they're right. saying that she's not, she's Dominican, but she's not actually a black Dominican. Mm -hmm. Hold on, but I don't know if they're saying that just because of her complexion, because if so, that's not fair. Well, no, I think that, and that's the thing. I think yeah. people are saying she's not, now, like I said, I don't know where the right. facts are coming from. Right. But they're saying, as a fact, she's not a Black Dominican. She's yeah. Dominican. And yeah. something about she's never identified as a Black Dominican, but now all of a sudden, and she's dating the baby, so there's that. But then know. I wonder, too, is that fair? Because, like, I've never just said I'm a Black woman. Like, I don't have, but I don't have to. But 
has she I don't know. I don't know. I just always wonder with that thing. That's like that's not always fair, I don't think. Yeah, I'm confused because I thought they was one of us. Well, but, but you have Dominicans like you know, Puerto Ricans, etc., who are they are black, but you, we usually consider them like Afro, you know, Afro Dominican, Afro Latino. But that might not maybe they just don't identify. Maybe she just hold on to her Dominican heritage and just say, I'm Dominican, you know, which is true too. But she could be, it just depends on her heritage, you know, just where her people come from. Well, that's where the confusion comes in. The Dominican Republic is a place, so that's your nationality, Correct. Dominican. But it can be an ethnicity as well. Well, yeah. Well, so, it be, yeah. It's just like, are you were your ancestors the colonizers who came over to Dominican? African. Which I'm pretty sure because of her complexion, that's mixed in there too. But you know, how how do you have any black in there too? Any African in there? What percentage of it? And do you? claim that because you are or you know i mean it's just it's complicated it's, it's very it very, is, very it's very, very complex, complex. It is. It, it, but it, i think it, twitter is mad because i guess people know her from before her and she never identified as black oh mm-hmm. and now, now all of a sudden all of a yeah. sudden and she there wanted, is a problem like there is and even, yeah like there was controversy around cardi b and i don't know the facts you know they were saying like you she, know, before she didn't want to identify as black but now she wants to identify as black you know, um, mm. nah, I feel that, especially if you were rocking with us before. Don't try to rock with us because it's cool now. Nah. Because it's cool, but then in school, did y'all did they try to say they were black and people like you ain't black? You right. know what I'm saying? And then they were forced that. to choose, you know. Mm-hmm. I feel that. Yeah. But then in her apology this morning, because when when I first heard it, I didn't hear the in t- t- totality of it. I heard like yellow bone, her name. And that's what I thought, too. Like what Cheryl was talking about, my mind went there. But then in her apology, which it, not, it might not necessarily been this morning, just when I saw it, she didn't even mention it. She was just saying like people were upset with her because um, they thought that she was saying yellow bones are better, basically saying like men want yellow women. And she mm-hmm. was like, no, like, I, I admit that colorism is an issue in our community. That's not what I was saying. My my man, he prefers yellow bone. I'm yellow bone. I was in the studio having a good time. I was turning up. I wasn't thinking deeply. I, I wasn't even going that deep with it. That's all that I was doing. I was just like, because she, and then she also added that dark skinned girls brag about their complexions. Why can't I brag about mine? <laughs> I that was interesting to me too, which made me wonder. Me and my son had that conversation before because he's pop smoke when he said it. He mm-hmm. was like, I like him red bone. Da, 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 da. And I said something, he was like, What's wrong with him liking red bone women? And then I had to think, like, nothing. It's nothing wrong with prefer- having a preference. I mean, so is it a problematic with her having a song Yellow Bone and promoting light skinned women? Well, I think, but, but that, that the pro- I think the problem lies in is she did she ever identify as a black woman until before now, right? Because yellow bone is a term for black women, correct? Like, that, and that's what people were mad about. But we don't know the facts. Black Twitter, y'all don't know is if she... this girl. Now the thing is, when I heard, I was just like shaking my head. Like <laughs> her career just started, so I hope I hope it's not true. I don't know, mm. but. I <laughs> it's just if you're not black, you just shouldn't be saying the N-word. That's just how Absolutely. I think about it. You just Absolutely. shouldn't. And if you did, if you felt comfortable enough to say it and you got caught in it, you should apologize. And if you're not sorry for it, don't give a fake ass apology. So you don't think uh Dominicans and uh, Spanish speaking people could use that word? Cause I think about Big Pun mm-hmm. and you know what I'm saying, and Fat Joe and all of those other guys and they say it and it's like, I don't know. It don't offend yeah, me. It don't because it's like they, and I actually listened to that. They were on the podcast, um, the People's Party podcast with Talib Kweli and they were talking about that. He was actually on there and they were saying like, they live the black experience. They was like growing up in New York and it's not, it's, but it's still different because like the white, but it's like, you are, you Hispanic, you, you know what I'm saying? You're a minority too. Maybe your people weren't enslaved here in America 
but it is different. It is different. I, I think you hit a key point different. that makes sense. They live the black, black experience. experience. So right. I, I think I think maybe that's why, like, I'm not that if, I'm not offended by it because yeah. I feel like they understand. So when they say it, it coming from a pure place, right, and not from like the white, because you know you got white people who might have grew up in the hood too, and it, I, I just feel like mm-hmm. y'all can't say it. That's still no, not. Okay. I still feel like that too. I feel like they yeah. can't say because it because like, y'all still have the white privilege as a Hispanic. They do not have no. Pr- color privilege privilege over black folk no ethnicity privilege over black folk yeah man i don't know man (laughs) i don't i don't know it is such a tricky thing because i think la is interesting too in that Mm -hmm. like just very Mm -hmm. much where we come from in the south everything is black and white and then you got a couple hispanic sprinkled in there and a couple asian people but here like in new york in la like people grow up together and cultures are very much mixed together, you know? Um, so I don't, I don't know. I, I personally, I personally feel like if you're not black, you shouldn't be saying it. But also at the same time, I'm not going to meet you who I don't know how you've been raised your whole life. And I meet you. I'm not, I don't feel like I'm here to tell you like, you can't use this word. Right. right. But I am here to say that, if you're not around your people and you saying this word, you can't be mad at the response that you get from black people. True that. So Sharon, let me ask you this question. So you, so you don't feel like even the Spanish speaking people shouldn't say it either. Like none of them. If you ain't black, like you're not period. Afro Latino. No, because, because the thing is, I feel like, like, yes, Shalini, I do agree with what you're saying about they don't get the white privilege, but black people mm. still are the lowest ethnicity on the totem pole like a lot of these people come over here and we Mm. built you know we built these things so that they could be able to do certain things and they still get to benefit off of it and we don't well we have to look at that too especially because of I don't know that whole privilege thing is a big thing like social privileges and what people get over don't yeah they're using things that our people built but I don't know if Hispanic people get privileges you know what I'm saying more privileges than black folk I don't I don't know if we're at the bottom of the totem pole if you will because like you gotta like a lot of them still ain't even being paid not even minimum wage but I mean, and not I even mean, necessarily because they're like... documented or undocumented not even that but you know they still got to deal with that like are you even you ain't even really American I don't mean that. I think that is totally a problem. But I'm talking about Mm -hmm. like laws that were written, like black people still can't necessarily get a loan. But then you came to this country, you know, and you were able to get a leg up. And it just it just still bothers me that black people still don't have a part of this wealth in this country. And a lot of other people come over here and are able to easily. I don't know it. if Hispanics getting that though. That might I, that might be like I, Asian population. I want to say them Asians and the, the yeah. Indian folks. Yeah, right. They 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 eating. They eating like they got Chinatowns everywhere. Like yeah, yeah, like do. all the big cities I go to, like it's a Chinatown there. And I always think like, dang man, I wish we had a town. You know, I wish we had a town, but we you know. did. But we, yeah, we yeah, had they towns. burned it down. Right, right. right. They and cut, cut interstates through them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they ain't cutting interstates through their stuff, man. <laughs> but nah, I feel y'all, man. But that was a great appetizer, y'all. That was a great appetizer. Let's get into this entree. So yeah. what we talking about today, y'all, we talking about financial literacy. We talking about um, how we grew up how we grew up and our ideas that we were introduced to when it comes to money, how our parents were and how we are now, like things that we learned along the way. It's kind of remind me of that book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. (laughs) Have y'all read that or heard about it? I've heard it, but I haven't read it. But I know it changed my life. It changed my life as well. So I got to read it. Literally both of y'all just said it changed my life. Yes. Robert Mm -hmm. Kawasaki, like he, had you know he had his dad and then he had this mentor essentially and his mentor was wealthy and his dad wasn't like his dad lived paycheck to paycheck and he kind of just talked about the differences between their thinking and the differences between their habits and he just break down you know basic business terminologies like assets and liabilities and things of that nature and um he just kind of just really break down the mental process of having wealth and building wealth in the mental process of making money and freely giving that away. Like right. the rich dad, poor dad. The habits know? and behaviors of the rich versus the not. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So who yeah. want to pop it off, man? Who want to <laughs> pop this off? I'll start. 
Why my baby get her get her lungs together? Yeah, she over there smoking that good melon. Thank you, boo. I appreciate that. (laughs) Oh, so I read the book November 2019. Um, and that's actually when I started investing too, like while reading that book. Mm. And I have so like I never was investing before that. Even like my jobs would do it for me. I would leave a job, cash in, 401k and all those things like that. Like, but with this time, I was like, he just broke it down in a way that I could understand. I really liked it too, because I felt like that was my experience growing up. Neither one of my fathers were wealthy per se, or even millionaires, but I had a father and I had a stepdaddy, my biological daddy. He was the type, like he would get ideas, he would do them, he invested his money like in in different ways. My stepdad would have ideas and would talk about these. He never executed. He bought all of these business books, including Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Yeah, mm-hmm. and like Richest Man in Babylon, he had all of this research material. And it seemed like he just got stuck in that phase. Like he he knew mm. that he had the knowledge. He just never executed mm. for whatever reason. He um and I, I, I maybe fear. What was um, his sign? I got a, a cancer, a June cancer. Um, yeah, I don't know. Me and my sister, we talk about that all the time. Like maybe mom, like, cause our mama, maybe she didn't support it and he didn't, I don't know. But I just know my dad was just like a, he would mention it one time before you know it. Now he opened up a restaurant down the street and he'd be like, he be like, I told you, be like, damn, like, I ain't no, like, it was in the works, like, it was for real, and I think, and I, and I took after a lot of that, too, but, um, and I had, I also had two very distinct experiences growing up, my father was cheap as fuck, yeah. which <laughs> yeah. wealthy people tend to be, he mm-hmm. had the same clothes, like, as if they ain't toe up, like, if it's good, it's, it's still it's still what it is. He still got the big screen TV with the booty on the back, like because mm. it still work. It's like so he just had the if it still work and it's still good. Ain't no. My sense mom kept hers it. for forever too. Mm, he's, I mean, mm-hmm. no, my, still got it. So it's oh, like right. yes, yeah, like he was always so cheap and it blew me. Like going out to eat, we got the plastic silverware. You put it in the sink. Why we gotta wash it? This shit's supposed to be thrown away. Right, right, right. <laughs> my then flip it to my my stepfather and my mother on the other side they were the keeping up with the joneses so Mm -hmm. you bought the two-story house in the suburbs you know you had the bmw and it's like and so i always thought they had money coming up honestly it wasn't until um my end just getting you know transparency my stepfather passed away and then shit like got real i was grown and i was a little more involved in in the conversation i realized y'all ain't got no money Hmm. Y'all ain't got no money. We living like this facade. We putting on this show for the world. Like, and we don't have no money. Right. And on the flip side, I remember one time my daddy always said like his dream car was a Tesla. I was telling him one time, I was like, uh, I'm going to get you that Tesla one day, daddy. And I remember I said that one day, like, I'm in it. One day we were just talking, we were drinking. I told him, I'm going to get you your Tesla. He was like, I don't need you to give me no Tesla. Like, I can get it right now if I wanted to. Like, <laughs> I just, you know, I just say, and I was just like, like you have enough, like you can actually do that for yourself right now if you wanted to. So I grew up with both experiences. I think I lived the experience like with my stepmom, stepfather and my mom, you know, for a while, like not necessarily getting BMWs, but just buying things before I could actually afford them, accumulating debt. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? In the, in the name of, and I don't even think I necessarily did it for show. I just think it was just I thought that's just what what you did. You were raised. You know? That's what you yeah. saw. So you, and you go to co- and, and I was raised in what I saw and also in what they taught. It was like you go to college and then you graduate and you, you know what I'm saying? You, you get your your family, y'all get a house. And then the goal is always to get a bigger house and a in a more expensive car. It was always to accumulate more expensive stuff, put mm-hmm. your kids in private school. So it's like I was headed down that path. On it, I just realized for me, and I'm I thank God that. I, stuff like that hits me rather fast. I was like, this shit don't make sense for me. And it was just, especially when I realized starting off, so I'm gonna say, I'm gonna go back to 2007. I, I had a job since I was 14, but like 2007. So now I have my son, he's like two years old. I'm working at the hotel, making like 750 an hour, no money. Um, I got food stamps, Medicaid, all that stuff, blah, blah, blah. 2008, I started working at the police. That's where I started working for now and one. Now I'm making $15 an hour. I got all these, I got benefits. Um, but then I, I remember looking and then we moved from the apartment, like we lived in Edgewater, um, in Savannah. It's like damn near the projects, but they apartments, but they just, mm-hmm. 
oh, 600, like I think we paid 650 a month. And then I moved to Berwick in a nice apartment. It was brand new. My rent's like 900 a month. It was like a step up. But then I remember yeah. thinking, I was sitting up in, at that time, that was my husband. And I was like, our living situation, we still live in check to check. Mm -hmm. Like our living situation ain't changed. How are we making double but my living situation really ain't changing. Like we still worrying about money every month. How are we going to do this? How are we going to do that? I still have a very small margin. I never mm. feel like I have enough money to save. And then I was like, okay, so that's when it kind of just hit me. Like this, this don't make sense. I got to do something different. And right. I had a very, and I think honesty, that's when, that's where vulnerability and transparency really comes in because you have to really be able to be honest with yourself, I think, but you also have to be able to be honest with somebody else who's doing better than you in that particular area. You can't mm -hmm. be front and like you got it together like I had to be honest with my daddy like look I don't have no savings I, and he always used to tell me like you need to get disability like a short-term disability not just with your job because if something happened to you you know that that can afford you know he was like I got short-term disability I had to come out for surgery my disability insurance paid me more money than you know my job was paying because he always he had a job and he had his own welding business on the side but he was like that paid me more money than both of them put together and I'd be like I can't afford to do that he always said like you need to get your own life insurance policy on me yeah I have you a beneficiary on mine but you need to get your own I can't afford that and he'd be like what you know so looking at all that, then I had to make some drastic changes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and a lot of them that didn't feel good, it wasn't comfortable because of thing, you know, I was something, it's hard to do that. You look at your account, you just got paid, you might have 2000 in the bank and it's like, and, and I've been wanting this thing, I'm gonna just go get that thing. The concept of saving for it, although it feel like I got it, was just so foreign to me. Then I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, cause I just got to, I was like, okay, I'm doing better with my money, but now I need to, I wanna build wealth. I don't even know where to start. And, I, and mm -hmm. so I just went through my stepdaddy archives. Like I knew he had the books. I had never looked into them, but I knew he had them. And I heard about Rich Dad, Poor Dad, actually from 3D Not T, my favorite rapper out of New Orleans. And so when I, I grabbed that book and I read it and I was just like, I mean, I would read like two or three pages, put it down. And I would literally start implementing that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what I say when I started um, investing in the stock market and just full transparency. So last just to give us to share because I always like to I'll be like I need some 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 reference points so 2019 I think I made about fifty thousand dollars total mm. that's self-employed 2020 I made probably a little more than that so from that year so 2019 so I started investing November 2019 all the way to December 2020 I, I got over seven thousand dollars in the stock market you know that's what I put in you know and that's not including the gains but mm -hmm. it was just like I was like I didn't even think I would I could be able to do that in the past like whenever I put money to the side or I would have to go back and get that shit because I now I'm broke I gotta go back and get it mm -hmm. but the way that they broke this thing down to do it and just take 10 percent whatever you make and I could be mixing up the books, but I know because I Richest Rich yeah, Man in Babylon. Okay, that was a good book too. And they explained mm -hmm. it. Yeah, I read it. Every time you make money, the littlest bit of money, somebody could buy a book from me. My books are $25. I'm going to take $2.50 off the top and I'm going go to go, I'm going to transfer that into my you know, investment account. I'm going to take, a, my, me personally, and I do 20%. So now I'm going to take $5 of that and I'm going to put that in my savings account. That's my rainy day. So I do grab from that every now and then if my account getting low. I put that in there. The rest of that, well, then, well, not the rest of that, but then you take another percentage of that and you put that towards your debts and, and your living expenses and everything. So it's just like, that's, my, and, and don't, you get paid. It was just like, don't pay your bills off top. Like, nah, you don't do that. You, when you take, you, you pay, pay yourself, yourself first. You pay yourself mm -hmm. first. That even changed my life financially, but then also energetically, because then I was also saying like, because when I would wake up a lot of times, but you know, self-employed, got all this shit to do. I would get to work. And I was like, nah, like I'm gonna pay myself my time too. So I pay myself my sure. money first, but I'm also pay myself my time mm -hmm. first. So I take my first couple hours, and when I wake up, that's for me to do. I'm still, and that's I still struggle with that because sometimes you got so much to do, you just want to get at it. But I got like, no, use this for yourself. Even if you just make your bed, turn on your music, you know what I'm saying, and just thank God for the day. Like something, take that first time for yourself. So I'm doing better. My, I feel I that. Learned, yeah, I, I am. I observe my people, um, you know, and in my research and then with myself, I'm still learning. I ain't saying I got this shit figured out and I'm good to go, but I'm learning. <laughs> and I do feel a whole lot better about my financial situation. <laughs> no, I feel you on that. And that, that's that's that was a concept that was new to me. Like, pay yourself first. Right. And, and the way you broke it down, it's just like you breaking down your money. 
and mm-hmm. it, every little bit count you know every little bit count and it adds mm-hmm. up and turns into something if you just do that and you know don't keep peeking at what you got over here <laughs> before you know it you be like oh lord this is what i got over here i did that mm-hmm. wow I did mm-hmm. that. That's beautiful. Man. And accounting, looking at what you're spending, how much you're spending on. I spend a lot of motherfucking money on food, y'all. Same. Ooh, and either, and that's when I had to. So first I was trying to cut it back. Like, okay, just only spend 150 a month and eating out. That's it. It wasn't working. So after three months of not working, I was like, okay, I got to switch something else around. So then I just had to stop getting my nails and toes done. So now mm. I'm like, all right, well, now I can spend 300 a month on oh, eating okay. out. <laughs> so you're budgeting too as well. You're giving yourself a monthly budget on what Right, in a way, to, and, and, and just admitting when it don't work. If it don't work, then just figure something else out. Stop trying to restrain it and just figure out what does work. No, nah, that make a lot of mm. sense too. It gives you that, that freedom so you don't have to be uncomfortable. It's like, yeah, this ain't going to work, so I need to take a little bit out of this. I could, I could sacrifice this, but this right here going to be what it is. Right. And I, right. I feel that. I feel that. Man, so Sheridan, yeah. what's up? Tell, tell us your story. What's going on? So for me, um, it's so funny. Like, just the way you grow up, you either try to do the exact opposite or you become the same. Mm-hmm. And so for me, the way I grew up, like, so my dad, rest his soul in peace, he, that man knew how to make money, but he didn't know how to keep money. Mm. He, his favorite line to me my whole life was, Sheridan, Sheridan, I made a half a million dollars. I'm your daddy. <laughs> <laughs> he wanted me to know, you know? And it's just like, when I look back, I'm like, when it came to business and making money, he was brilliant. He knew how. He had a business mind. I remember growing up, he would take me to the flea market. I wanted to start a business myself, too. And I was always hustling growing up. So what I would do, I would get all for people from the church. They would just give me stuff. When they found out, I would just gather shit. And he would take me to the flea market every Saturday. It was about 45, 30 to 45 minutes away. But we pack up the car. We go down there. And he sit with me and let me sell my stuff at the flea market every weekend. And I remember even going out, like, making cookies, selling them to the neighborhood kids. Like, I was always trying to figure out ways to make money. Mm-hmm. And just even, like, growing up, like, I remember being a kid and living in nice ass houses, but it was like, we would always live in the house and then we would move. Something would happen. And it was just like, we would have nice cars and then it would get repossessed. And, you know, it's like not to tell all my business on air, but it's just like, kind of like you were saying about appearances. It was like, my dad always wanted the nicest house. He wanted the nicest cars. He wanted, anytime we were going to go buy something, he wanted to get the most expensive thing, you know? And he, the way he made money, he had a driver school, the Covington uh, School of Driving. Mm. And he employed people under him. And looking back now, like, he employed Black people, you know? Like, it was kind of great. I'm like, I didn't know what he was doing at the time but because I was so young. But all his employees were Black, now that I think about it. And it was like he knew how to think and how to generate that money, but he didn't know how to save. He didn't know how to keep it or what to do with it. So for me, it was just like, like growing up, it's like I knew things were good and then they weren't. And then when I was finally on my own, I got my first job when I was 16 or 17, 17, I think. Um, But it was just like, I didn't want to be like that. I wanted to, because I knew that I knew how to make money like my dad, but I watched him lose everything. Mm. And, you know, when he passed away, he didn't have anything. He was broke. He was dead broke when he passed away to the point that my oldest brother had to pay for his funeral. Mm. And I'm like, damn, like, like my dad could have been great. Like he could have been and Oprah, he could have been these great people that we read about, but he didn't know how to save money or how to manage it, mm-hmm. you know? And, you know, I think his karma caught up with him as well, you know? But um, but for me, yeah, I was like, I don't, I don't want to be like that. I want, I want to be good. I want to be able to give my kids something. I want, you know, and what's that J. Cole song? It's one of my favorite songs, and he talks about, black people and money 
Oh, uh, you talking about um Lord have mercy. Can't stay afloat, something about money, can't hold money. Uh oh, oh more money. Yes, talking about more yes, money, yes. Yes. I think about that song so, so often money. because it's so yeah. accurate. Scared of he sounds scared of going broke because I don't know money. Yeah, yeah. he yeah. said, um, Oh man, I can't. I can like hear it in my head and see it. And then but, also was another song he said he was like, "I swear you, I'm like you would mix with Riley." Sunday I be trying to say the word. No, no, no. What that song was? He was talking about spending his money. Guess it's just that nigga urge. Mm. He talk about that a lot. He a lot, yeah. That that's what I was thinking. He talk about this. Yeah, uh, got stay afloat money. Is it's so crazy, you know? Because I'm like. Damn, like my dad really could have been a millionaire, but he didn't know how to manage his money. Mm -hmm. And it is just like generations and generations and generations. So for me, like, um, I would say over the pandemic, like since we weren't able, well, we're still in the pandemic, but last year, 2020, when we weren't able to do anything in LA, we're still not able to, but it was like, I was just like, all right, I'm just going to start saving money and i just started paying off my debt and i haven't read rich poor or rich dad poor dad i need to read that but i started doing a thing with my money where it's like i come up like okay i have investment i'm saving towards investments i'm saving towards emergency i'm saving towards vacation and for me what i would do what i did last year for 2020 i said by the end of the year i want this much money saved and then mm -hmm. i was like all right Every month I need to save this much. And then weekly, every week I had a jar or an envelope and I would drop money in each envelope for what I was saving for. Mm. Um, and then I invested in the stock market as well last year mm -hmm. in March. It was right when the pandemic started actually last year. Um, but for me, it's just like, I just grew up seeing my parents struggle and knowing that they had the capability to be better. And even like, with my mom, like not to say too much, but it was like when she was younger, she lived well. And then it was like, she got older and she got married and she had children and this, this, and this happened. And it was just like this constant cycle of living paycheck to paycheck, mm -hmm. you know? And because I watched my parents do that and to know that they were, handling their money great at one time, just for me, I was like, I don't, I don't want to do that. I want, I want to, I don't want to say be better, but I want to learn from what they went through. Absolutely. As you should, right? Man, that's interesting though. Mm -hmm. So your pops was getting to the money. Listen, we, <laughs> I remember at one point we had, we lived in this mansion. It was wow. like, and it's so crazy because my mom, literally the way she said it, she was like, I literally visualized this. I wrote down in my book that I wanted to live in a house made of stucco and I wanted palm trees or a weeping willow tree in the front yard. And we literally moved into this house and we had a maid like, I re but wow. I was in elementary school remembering wow. this stuff. And then I remember... Wow. Towards the end of it all, we moved in this other house that had a pool, it had palm trees, and like it was nice. There were marble floors, like mm -hmm. that thing was nice. And I even remember being in school. I was in um in this class where we had to, I guess we were learning about measurements or whatnot, and we had right. to do measurements of our house and make like a smaller version. And so I made my house and brought it to school, and everyone was just looking like like, well, hold on. That's where you live? <laughs> this is your house? <laughs> right. This is where you live? New, new on ATL. <laughs> yeah, yeah, basically. But then I watched as I got older. It was like, the house is downgraded. The, you know, I... <laughs> No, I get it, man. I got people yeah. in my family like that too. Like lights off, not right. on, you know, like what's mm -hmm. going on? And it's just mm -hmm. like, dang. And being so young, you don't understand that you have wealth. You don't understand that your parents are doing well. You just this is your reality. But then when you go from that to things changing, right, then you know. Right. Mm -hmm. It's issues on the horizon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. And that's a big problem with the black community. I ain't even gonna lie, man. Like we, we feel like we got to overcompensate when we get a little money and do what we see in on TV or, or, you right. know, and it's like, that's really, 
I'm not going to say it's an illusion, but at the same time, it's like we got to learn to live within our means and even below our below. Means. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Any book that I've read about building wealth, like, and I think about rich people that I know, like, you don't know they're rich. You they don't. be looking bummy. Their house be mm-hmm. off in the cut, off a road you can't even find. It's My daddy reason. still live in the hood. Yeah. And it's a reason why, you know, yeah. because they want to keep it like. Right. You it's one thing to make it, but it's another thing to keep that mother. Yes. And to have yeah. something to pass on. To think like and I was growing up thinking my mom and them was rich. And then I grew up and they had nothing for me. And then my daddy, who I thought was because like, he lived in the hood, it's like like I didn't think he had nothing. And yet and now I get to live in a home that he he you know he built and now I get to live rent free. Like he has something for he me to help me to leverage me, you know, like that's right. but the ones who had all the stuff, man, it's wow. And that's the truth of it. And I know some people in here are hip hop fans, and I'm gonna just keep it G with you from a person who studied the business of hip hop. And music in general, a lot of these rappers you see with all these chains and all these cars and all these, they broke. It's they dead. broke. Yeah. It's they fake. broke as fuck. It's like, an dead. illusion. It's an yeah. illusion. The house is owned by the broke record label. Broke. Those cars are owned by the record label. They're making payments on their chains. It's like they're broke, bro. They are broke. And that's the reality of it. That's the reality of it. And it's like a lot of people feel like we got to look like this to, 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 to show our wealth. It's like, man, that's, that's fake, bro. That's how fake. black wealth has been presented to us. Right. And mm-hmm. it's like, bro. Yeah. But the ties are turning now. So yes. for me, for me though, like my parents are like the opposite, but they're the same. Like when it comes to a lot of stuff, I swear to God, I had like a really balanced childhood because of these two different people with these two polarizing perspectives. And I got to choose which one was resonated with me the most. So my mom, my mama is a entrepreneur. She's a go getter. She know how to make money. That lady know how to make money. I'm talking about she'll sell Mary Kay. She'll sell walking products. She'll sell anything. She gonna figure out a way to make some money. <laughs> My mama also is a, like a, 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 a professional finesser. Like she understand the system, taxes, <laughs> all that. She know how, she know loopholes. She know how to get the money. You know hey. what I'm saying? She gets it. But my mama, I don't want to stereotype and make it a woman thing, but most women I know, y'all be spending a lot of money. I ain't going to lie. I ain't going to lie. I ain't going to lie, now. Nah. It depends. Yeah, because my mama that's wasn't the spender. My stepdaddy subjective. was the spender. Yeah, yeah. I think that, depends. That, that's what it Hollywood say, I think. Yeah. It do depends. It do depend. But my mama be spending that. She be spending that down. What's her money. thing? Like clothes? Man, it's gadgets. Okay, mama, that was my stepdaddy too. He was a techie. Yeah, yeah. My mama gets all the kitchen gadgets that you can think about. All the all kind of gadgets that you be like, why did you get that? But then it oddly is convenient and makes sense. Like, <laughs> it makes sense. <laughs> right. Me and my daddy always be like, why, why did you get that? Why he be like, Are oh, you wasting money? Why you? But then we be like, Hey, boy, this, this shit kind of cool, actually. <laughs> like, Mom Deuce was on the air fryer before it was cool. Like, I ain't even lying to y'all. We was like, why'd you get this? We got an oven. We could fry stuff. She's like, oh, I just seen this look cool, boy. That's all we use. And then the world wow. got on the air fryer. Like, that's that's the type of person. She, she like gadgets. Okay. So she spent a lot of her money on gadgets. You know what I'm saying? So... That's her thing, but she spends it. She spends it. That's my mama thing. She's she getting better now, but that's her. But my daddy on the other side, this nigga is cheap. <laughs> this nigga <laughs> is cheap. <laughs> he is the epitome <laughs> of cheap. That nigga don't spend no money. That nigga don't spend no <laughs> money. That nigga will have money, and he, he don't look it. He don't yep. act like it. He don't spend no money. But the thing is, he ain't got that mindset to go get it. You know, he'll work his job, mm. but he'll put money to the side to make sure he has mm. some. So together, if they was to really got them be on some shit, they are forced to be reckoned with because she bringing it in and he know how to keep he it. He know how to keep it. I like but, that. You know, but you know, you know, you know how marriage be sometimes, you know, yeah. they, 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 they figure it out, but they do work well as a team. I ain't going to downplay it like that, but they do. But. I got to see those different perspectives. And my pops, mm-hmm. he he always used to tell me, son, you got to pay yourself first. You got to. And I never knew what the hell he was talking about till I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And I was like, oh, this was his time. I said, boy, dad, dad, this book right here is talking about a lot of stuff you be talking about. He said, yeah, man, I be trying to tell you. And the reason why my pops know that, because when he was coming up, he had this white guy 
who was wealthy out in California. He kind of mentored my dad and taught him some things. And the dude was going to get my pop set up with all this stuff and stock and gold. And But my pop, he, I guess he didn't trust him or I don't know what it was. But for whatever reason, he didn't take the dude up on his offer. The dude was trying to take my pops up on his way. So that that's where he get his, he, you know, that knowledge and understanding of money from. Um, so I got to see these two different perspectives. And like my parents, like when we, we grew up in the hood, like, but my mom and dad, before I was born, they stayed in the projects. They went from the projects to, to getting their first house in the hood to that, to moving out the pool. So it's like, it was a constant step wow. up and they were, and, but they were living paycheck to paycheck. But at the same time, my mom and my dad, they, they do work well as a team together. So it was like, everything was taken care of. And they might not have had extra to do this and that, but they made it work. You know, my mom, she always liked nice things. She always liked gadgets, always been into that. So before she could buy my right, layaway was our best friend. You know that's what I'm one saying? Thing, yeah, that that's one thing. My mom, like same thing, like growing up, like we may not have had this or that. But like if she got a little bit of money, maybe once a month, you know, she would do. We're going to go to goodwill i'm gonna show you these nice brands like mm -hmm. you can get nice brands you can get quality stuff for a good deal absolutely and that's what my mom's was all along mm -hmm. and then when they moved out the pooler you know it got kind of shaky because my mom lost her job and my dad was carrying the burden and they wouldn't let me help at all like they felt like oh this is our responsibility they wouldn't take my money nothing i, I had watched them struggle but they figured it out still you know what i'm saying and now they're in a much, much better financial situation, much, much better. And it's because, you know, they both had to develop some kind of balance, you know, like my mom, mm -hmm. she still likes her things, but she's really smart about how she get them. And, you know, and it's just, they stay at their means. I don't say they stay below. My pops would love if they stay below their means, <laughs> but they at least stay at their means where it makes sense, where they got some money, where they can do extra things if they want to do that. So I grew up seeing that. And for me, you know, reading that book and adding more on that foundation, I think it kind of helped prepare me. And I, I'm also in the stock as well, you know. Um, I, I'm, my, my portfolio is doing pretty good too. I ain't going to lie to y'all. But, um, <laughs> you know, and... I'm still at the beginning of my of my journey, essentially, because I'm building wealth because my parents, they didn't have wealth. You know, they had what they needed to live comfortably. You know what I'm saying? But I feel like my 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 role now is to take it to the next level because yes. they showed me I could live comfortably. And I've done it. And I was out in California. I was comfortable. What's the you next know? level? The next level is accumulating wealth and being able to really have something to be able to share and pass down. Like my parents have the house to pass down for me. Right. And that's more than what they had coming up. So they did their part and take it to the next step. So I feel like mm -hmm. I got to do my part and take it to the next step. Not only do I have to provide for my children, their grandchildren, but I have to provide for my grandchildren. You see what I'm saying? So that's what I'm on right now. Okay. Cause I had learned the definition of financially free. I think that was always the goal of mine one time to be one day to be financially free. But I think I, I was equating that with having a whole lot of money, which I, I that's still a goal too, to have wealth, a whole lot of money. But then I learned that no financially free. And I think that might've been Rich Dad Poor Dad was like, no, it's when you don't have to work your, your investments, you know, your, your money, money is working, working for you. For you, Right. And so now it's like, and so you accumulate so much in assets over time that now you can back off from investing so much energy and your money working for you. And I was like, that's right. what I want. I need right. to be financially free. I need my money working for me so much that I ain't got to. Right. And that's, that's like, I'm glad that you brought that up because that is, that's the goal too. Yeah. Yeah. That's really, that's the goal to get to the big goal. Shit. I'm going to pass things down my, cause I ain't going to have this energy to be doing all this stuff forever. Yeah. You know, eventually the money, man, not eventually, but people period if we got to get to the point where our money starts working for us it's not a thing of we punch in and we're putting in time and hours to make money it's more so like 
the money is doing it for us. You know what I'm can, saying? Because it can, and it should. Absolutely. Otherwise, is, I, another thing I love from Rich Dad Poor Dad, he was talking about saving money because that's all I was, that's the most financial advice I ever got from both either, either mm-hmm. parents was save your money. Mm-hmm. But when it's saved, it's part, you're actually losing because of inflation. When your money is part, it's losing value. It's just sitting there losing. Mm-hmm. But when it's investing, it's working and it's gaining, it and was just gaining. like, Absolutely. and it's gaining. I was like, whoa. Mm-hmm. Whoa. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Whoa. Man, let's give them a couple examples. Like how how could your money work for you? What's some examples of some things you can get into for your money to work for you? So I definitely recommend everyone get a um, high yielding savings account. Um, meaning, um, well, mine is with, well, I took my money out because it dropped, the percentage rate dropped, but, but I was with um, Amex and basically it's a savings account that mm-hmm grows it just grows over time but at a higher percentage rate so it's called um god damn i lost the word uh high yielding savings account that is a specific term for it but that's easy you just do the research for me at the time amex was the best one but that rate dropped because Mm. of the economy and um it just the economy basically yeah. the so rate can change isn't that an account where like you put the money in there and they invest it for you and then they put the interest in up back in the account i thought is it was that a money that? market account no 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 it's like so different so banks it? have them uh-huh. but it's just a savings account and it's called a high yielding savings account and basically the percentage rate that you get back from the money being there is higher than a typical savings account. Okay, so okay. a regular savings account would be just for example, 0.05, but a high yes. yielding savings account would be like 0.15 or something. Okay. Um, right, right, right. So you get there, more money back. Yeah. You get more money back. Um, mm-hmm. But Amex American express had a really good one. Um, I think I was reading, I was actually reading last night about, cause I was thinking about doing a different one, but I think it was saying Citibank has a really good rate. Um, I know Ally, that's who my car loan is with. They have a really good rate. Mm-hmm. Um, so you literally just research, um, savings account with a high yielding, high yielding savings accounts. Okay. Um, right. and that's one of the easiest ways. But it just sucks right now because of Corona and our economy is trash. Mm. So those rates aren't as high as they were before. Right. Man, give us more, Charlie. What's something? To get My to favorite one I learned from Wall Street Travel. He from New Orleans, too. He said one of the best ways. All right. So he got AT&T. That's who his phone, his phone, his cell phone services with. Mm-hmm. AT&T is a dividend yielding stock. So he bought enough AT&T stocks to where his dividends pay out enough to pay his phone bill every month. Mm. So now he, that's, that's one small avenue of financial freedom. Now out of his pocket, he ain't got to pay his cell phone bill no more. His stocks are paying his cell phone bill. So that's something that I'm trying to do right now because dividends are small. They're pretty minute. Yeah, they are. Um, But like right now I get about $9 a month in dividends or something like that. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to invest more in dividend paying stocks so it can add up to $143 a month so it can pay my (laughs) phone bill every month for me. (laughs) And eventually I can add up in it so it can do my car. I want a new car. My dividend is going to buy me a new car, you know, so that was one way for me. For sure, man. I was asking y'all because I don't know. <laughs> yes, you <laughs> try, do. I'm trying to figure it <laughs> you out. You do. Just think about things you've done. I'm trying to figure it out. I thought about some things that I wanted to do that I ain't did yet. <laughs> yeah. I want to get mean, into like flipping houses, but I just don't know nothing about so, it. So, yeah. So, like, that's an example. I want to get into real okay. estate. And okay. I'm, I was really thinking about buying my first house this year. I'm not going to lie. So, yeah, definitely real estate is a great way to make your money Mm -hmm. work for you. You know, you buy you a house, you know, and then you you can rent it out. You can Airbnb it out Airbnb these days, you know, and you literally making money every month and you just chilling. Yeah, you got to keep up with the maintenance. But, you know, I had a a, a mentor, real estate mentor. and He was just telling me, like, every time you get paid, you're supposed to put some money aside for those times when something is broken. So you could just, you know. Okay, cool. Let me go into that account and get this fixed. 
and it ain't really you know it ain't really gonna hurt you like that versus you know just stacking it then you got to pay for it like right now and it's like oh snap where well, i'm gonna get the money from right right so yeah definitely real estate is a great way airbnb another great way you know it's another thing like these people be renting out their cars and stuff like that yep. now Mm, yeah. that's another great way real quick in there so i just watched this uh <laughs> podcast episode this guy was talking stranger quick. danger <laughs> he was saying he bought a car one of real tiny smart cars i think uh-huh. he said it, it costs i don't remember how much it cost him whatever it was oh but the car note on it is 150 a month that's what he said and he he leases it out to people that they could drive around and do those things like either mm-hmm. like um you know what they drive around eat like oh the uber eats and stuff like that that's what they, mm-hmm. they get it they run it from him so they, they can do that in addition to that he gets companies to pay him 150 dollars a month to advertise on the car so he'll put like your sticker your magnet on the side of the car mm-hmm. you pay him 150 a month and so he said he do it on the left side the right side and the back and right. so it's like now that's you making money four different ways. Somebody rent it from you to drive it around and make money, make money for themselves, and it's advertising purposes. And I was like, oh, I, I don't right. think I would do it, but that's another great idea if anybody else. Would. Yeah. I was doing right. that at one point actually. Yeah. I don't think I had told you guys, but yeah, when I was so the previous job that I had, I was doing deliveries, and this company called Rapify. They basically have different campaigns. I've only done one, but Mm -hmm. theoretically they have different campaigns every month, but they basically have an area. So all of LA, I get paid based on the mileage, but then they have a hotspot, which was like Beverly Hills, West Hollywood. And I was advertising dog food on my car. So they put this big ass wrap on my car. It was like red. It was actually great because it made me very inconspicuous. Like no one ever fucked with me because I got this big red dog on my car. (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) um (laughs) but yeah they would pay me every month to drive around and it was a direct deposit every month how much my job was so it wasn't an exact amount every month but it was around 200 a month 200 extra dollars a month sounds yeah, great. Yeah, but no, driving, no, 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 you got, I lied. Just, every two weeks. It was like 200 oh, every oh, two weeks. Oh, excuse me. That's and you didn't it have was. it was 400 <laughs> And it was a paid month. off of how many miles you drove? The mileage, yeah. And, okay. How did they determine where you were? Like if you said like, I was in so, the hotspot. The app. So it was an oh, app that GPS I downloaded on my phone. And then, yeah, they just tracked me okay. as I was driving. Interesting. Right. Um, the only thing was they would only pay you to, up to a certain amount of mileage. Okay. And oh, I cap. drove way more. So yeah, I should have got paid option, more. Though. But yeah, but it was $400 in my bank account every month. And I did it for like three or four months. Yeah, that's a great way to make some good passive income right there. Yeah. It passive was- income to people, for folks who don't know, is income that you get while you're doing pretty much even nothing or something you would normally do. It's just, yeah, I take those extra $400 a month driving around. Yeah, I do that. Literally, I just had to have a big red dog on my car. And it actually worked out great because funny story, I was in Santa Monica one day, which is the beach for those of you guys who don't know. And I was trying to find a parking spot, no fucking parking anywhere. And I'm driving and I see a spot. And so I pull up and I'm about to back into the spot. And this lady swoops into the spot. I pulled up. I got out my car. I said, oh, hell no. I got out of my car and I looked at her. I said, uh, ma'am, I was going to park there. And she was like, oh, I'm so sorry. She was like, I didn't know you were black. I saw the dog on the car and I didn't know you were black. <laughs> That's she was funny. like, I got you, sis. And then she pulled out the spot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. That's funny right there. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. We all we got, man. We got to look out for each other. Hey, I was like, okay. Like, oh, oh, I got you, sis. I got you, sis. <laughs> Straight up. That's funny, man. I got I, that's one thing too that I've been thinking about doing too. For another, it's kind of passive income, but it's kind of not because you kind of got to put some work in. I'm, I feel like I should say this because somebody listening need to hear this. So you get you a, a a design right, and you could go through a website like Printful and there's other websites who sell T-shirts right. So you upload your design onto the website. And they will put them on T-shirts for you. They will ship them, mail them, make them, all that. They do all of it for you. All you got to do is upload your design on there and they will do everything for you. And 
the easy thing about it is you literally get your design uploaded there and you just promote it, you know, promote it, promote it online. Just get people to click the link and buy it. And you ain't got to touch nothing, make nothing. You literally just making money mm -hmm. by getting people to come to the website and buy your T-shirt. Yeah. Just get them samples in the mail because I ain't like the quality of mine. You but got to get those yeah, samples. Get them samples you know? in the mail. <laughs> and I will say this, Printful let me down a little bit when I was doing my shirts for my, my album. Mm -hmm. I had the parental advisory sign on the cover and they they bucked on printing some shirts because of that. And I had people buying oh. them. I had to refund people because like when I finally, I had uploaded a different version without it. Then they sent it finally after like two weeks and then they sent them the wrong size. And I was oh, loaded. Man. Yeah, so I was like, I ain't yeah. gonna lie. So for me, that turned me off a little bit. But I, yeah. I might give another company another chance. But, yeah. you know, I just feel like I need to put out there. And I felt like I need to tell the other side of the story. Yeah, that does help. And another option, too, is like, because I work with a lot of... Um, writers of you know people who want, want books i write books for them so amazon had this thing called short read so it's basically saying that some people want to be able to like if they get their hair done they under the, the they under the dry or maybe at the airport airport waiting on their plane mm -hmm. to blow. they want to be able to start something read start and finish a book in that amount of time so I'm about third so they have them and that's how the sh amazon short reads are categorized 10 minute reads 15 minute reads 20 minute reads 45 minute reads etc so you could write a book that's an ebook that's about 15 pages, 10 to 15 pages, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Get it formatted, mm -hmm. upload it. And so that's a one-time thing that you did, but now you make an income off of it. Amen. I might look into that. So I always tell yeah. people who don't, it's like, cause maybe like writing a full length book is like intimidating for a lot of people. They don't feel like they equipped to do that, but you can totally do one that's like, 10 uh, just a short read it can yeah. be a novel it can be fiction it can be self-help whatever mm -hmm. you want it to be about mm -hmm. yeah yeah that's dope right now yeah you got shared it in her bag right now she like oh, right okay, i'm thinking up. now yeah yeah and that also helps because that establishes you because you can do so many you can even do like i remember when i first started writing i was doing like these erotic short stories under i was name. literally just about to say but, that yeah. I some sex books like yeah oh and, I did, oh and it's God. not even under my name like it's under like i did a uh, pseudonym so people you don't even i just get like and i don't because I, I have a, i have mine on sale for like a dollar 99 cent a piece on amazon so but i make like ten dollars a month off of them like it's still cool though what yeah. oh god yeah i gotta get with you i yeah, gotta yeah, yeah. That. yes that's let me one. find out right here damn so i'm gonna tell you guys one that i really want to do but i'm still in the process of researching it because it might help somebody else out okay. there okay um atm businesses you can buy an ATM machine, which depending on the one you buy, it can be between a thousand and three thousand mm -hmm. dollars. You buy the ATM machine, and literally all you need is a business to put it in. And with the business, you you, you can pay them whatever. So say you come up with a deal and you're paying them three percent of what you make a month. Mm -hmm. Um, literally all you have to do with it is just go in and change out the money every month. Wow. And I was thinking, I was like, okay, what if I bought an ATM? I just need a business to put it in. And then what if I bought another ATM somewhere else and did another business? And then I was thinking of it as far as quarters because I was thinking about stocks. So I was like, okay, first quarter, I buy my own. Second quarter, I buy another one. Third quarter, I buy one for a friend. I invest in a friend who's in a different state. And then fourth quarter, I don't know. But... I don't working. know. I've, I've been reading about plan. it and it's like, yeah. it's very easy to do. It's very minimal work. It can be a lot of money, but it has to be a high traffic business. And, you know, you have to be in. It's best when you have your I own business. That. That's the best way to do it. But if you don't, you got to get in somewhere. My, I feel that. I didn't even know that you can do that. I thought that the people that own the business just did it. But that makes sense, too. Like, yeah, how no. Yeah. If and I own the business, I would let. And the way I thought about it, I was like, I really want to put it in a black business. That way I'm keeping the money in the black community. Right. I was like, oh, what black businesses do I know? Especially that? if you can think of any businesses that are like cash only. You can't exactly. Pay cards yeah. yeah. And then it's like, they, you know, they always charge you like two, three dollars if that's not your. That's man. what the person who owns the ATM is getting. No. Yes. Well, thank you for that. That's just a hustle. And vending machines. Vending machines mm -hmm. is another one. But mm -hmm. the thing with vending machines, you got to have a lot of them. That's how you make a profit. And it's right. a little bit more work um, to do. 
And I oh, think they're man. a little more expensive than machines. But no. either way. Man, thank you yeah. for that, Sherry. But yeah, an ATM is only three thousand. I was like two thousand dollars. Like that's easy. You just save right. that. I saved it. I saved the money last year. I saved the money for my ATM machine. But I'm like, I don't. I just haven't done the research yet to be out here trying to invest in an ATM machine. Go on, get right and keep us pro. Keep us posted on that process. Girl. I keep to- you guys posted, but yeah, I, that was one of my things I was saving towards last year. I was like, I need to invest in this ATM machine the beginning of January. And yeah, I saved it. Oh, that's dope. Heck yeah, man. Yeah. Hey, thank thank you for that, y'all. Thank you, ladies. I, I appreciate that. And I know that the listeners appreciate that, yes. too. Yes. Financial wellness in the black community. That's what community. I'm talking about. Right, right. So, yes, man, let's get into this dessert, man. Tell me something sweet. Who will hmm. go first? <laughs> I don't know. You always go first, Chad. You might as well I do. go first. Yeah. <laughs> did, I t- did I talk about the... Um, that- that opportunity, writing opportunity I got for the artist. Did I talk about that on the podcast? No, you did. Okay. You saw, talked about it online. I seen that. I was like, mm, so what happened? Well, I'm, I'm more than the opportunity itself was how I got the opportunity. Right. So it was just like this artist who made like these bomb ass collage kind of painting type of things. And, and he made a Zora Neale Hurston. I love Zora Neale Hurston. I wanted it. I knew I couldn't afford it. It was like $4,000, but I would just, yeah. So I would just reach out to see like, what's up and let them know. I love it. And like, if I could put it on layaway, let me know. Um, right, and right. he was basically like, no, but in the process of it, he was like, yo, he ended up hitting me up later and was like, I just went through your whole crack tea Instagram and I love it. He was like 98% of like everything that you posted, like that's the kind of content I have on my website. I would love if you could do some, like some writing for our website. I was like, I went and checked out the website to make sure it matches my vibe. And I was like, you fucking right. In yeah, addition yeah. to that. He was like, and I have another idea. What if you like, I love your voice and you read some of the pieces and I, and and so it's like, I get paid good money to like read it. I have to like video edit it too. Cause you know, I fuck up when I read it and I can't Mm -hmm. pronounce it, but either way, like I was like, I got this experience because I was willing to reach out to an artist for a piece of artwork that for one, I knew I couldn't even afford, but Mm -hmm. I just put myself out there and I got in something beautiful and amazing came from it. So that's right. Congrats. Congratulations. I love when life works like that. Uh. Hell yeah. (laughs) Come on, Shannon. What's up? Tell us something sweet. Yeah. So, so I told, oh, I didn't tell, okay, so I told you, Clay, but, um, so I recently went out on a limb, I quit my job, um, (laughs) but Mm -hmm. I got offered a new job, I wasn't even planning to quit my job, like, but I was just going through a lot, like, I had been going through a lot of health issues before Christmas, I had chronic back pain so it was just getting really bad driving because I was in my car for at least eight hours a day at least okay and it's a pandemic so as far as like on my breaks like I can't go sit in somewhere really I'm just out here in my car you know unless I happen to be with my house I can come home but I just I was asking the universe I was like you know I really need health insurance and I need something's got to give because my job had done some real shady things during the pandemic, just things that were unforgivable. And it just it just kept building and kept building and kept building. And I just found out that this was not a company that I wanted to be associated with, but I needed a job. Mm-hmm. Um, so towards the end of the year, like I just was really just in a bad place. My mental health, my physical health, like it was not good. And I was just tired. I was like, what? Something's got to give. And then out of the blue I get hit up like hey do you want to come work this other job it's a driving job but we'll give you benefits and we have an office so you're not in your car all day um and you're guaranteed your 40 hours a week and you know we're not we're not complete lunatics (laughs) right 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 and the thing was I wasn't even out job hunting I just was telling the universe like I'm tired I need I need I need something. Right. And I get How this did it call. literally come about? Like they found your LinkedIn, somebody referred No, you. they knew me. It was, okay, it was okay. some people That's, that knew yep. me. I love yeah. that. Mm. Yep, some people I love that knew it. me called me up and was like, hey. And I was like, hell yeah. 
And then it just happened so quick. And now I'm just like, wow, like I've been there now, what, one, two, almost a month now. And it's like nice. I can significantly feel the difference in my back. And I know that I'm going to get health insurance. Right. Right. And I'm like, wow, I, I didn't. I was literally just asking the universe mm, for this stuff. Right. I wasn't even actively working to change to my situation. And the universe just dropped it in my lap. Just dropped mm. it in your lap. That is here's beautiful. A, here's a new job and health insurance. Mm. Right, right. That is beautiful. Y'all and remember? with people you know. Yeah, yeah. And you ain't got to deal with all that craziness. Yeah, it was, it was just insane. And what I will say is, when you do bad things to good people, your karma will come. Right. Straight up. Straight up. Straight up. So, Let me see. Let me see what I got here, y'all. Hmm. I got I got some good stuff. I got some sweet stuff, man. I don't know what I want to talk about, though. So, okay. This is the first thing that comes to mind. So, I reconnected with an old friend of mine. And it was pretty sweet. A lady friend? Yes. Okay. Oh, of course a lady friend. That look on his face. <laughs> Hold on. Do I got Somebody, you got, it you might got, just be audio, not audio visual out. one day. So they need Time to out. know. Time <laughs> out. You ain't just give me I, I got the cutty last night face look. I didn't say it. You did. I didn't say it. I didn't say it. He was like, Hold on. Come back. <laughs> Nice, nice, nice. We and we and you were just talking about that. Like that's an inspiring place to be in. Like that, those feelings give you a lot of good creativity and shit. Yeah, you feel yeah. me? Yeah, like catching up and all that good stuff. Yeah, you know, catching up, you know, the old friend, good old times. Uh-huh. You know, yeah, yeah. It just proofs up your mental health and shit. It just yeah, feels good. Yeah. It is good for your mental health. Yeah, yeah, definitely, I love definitely. It. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's my that's my my dessert. <laughs> All right, and that's for the to go box. To go box, people. I feel like we gave them that the too. To go we box. did definitely re rich that part. That first of all, for sure. Highly recommend that. And also, man, we got to start living. If you can't live below your means, at least live at your means, you know, because we well, who are we impressing? We ain't got really nobody to impress. It really don't matter at the end of the day. Like it don't matter. Like long as you straight, that's what really matter. You know what I'm saying? It don't matter what it look like. You know what I'm saying? As long as you straight in real life. Mm-hmm. So, yes, man. Live below your means if you can. Stack that money. Get that money. Keep it. Yeah. I challenge you guys to make, like, I'm super big on goals. Like, setting a goal for yourself and visualizing that shit and writing it down because it's powerful when you write things down. And I challenge you guys to set a savings goal or a money goal that you want for the end of the year and literally sit down and plan that shit out. And that right. is my challenge. That's what I'm talking about. What you got for the people, Charlie? I'm just piggyback off Sheridan. Yeah, just set goals. And I like to, with my goals too, to do like a finance money goal, a family goal, um, physical health goal, oh, you know? So like, yes. yeah. And that way, cause I, I set them for like, I'm, I'm real micro. So I set them for like the week and then day by day, when I wake up in the morning, I try to do it at night before I go to bed for the next day. But most likely in that, that time that I, I pay myself, I sit there and, and what's my, how am I achieving my goal today? Like, what can I do for my physical health today? Clay, thank you for being an accountability partner in that. Nice. I did not run today, but I went walking. Me and my daughter went walking today and that felt so good. It just felt good. Yes. And so yeah, just all of these categories. Yes. Mm-hmm. What can I do today in this area, in this area, and that it helps and it feels good. That's beautiful. Mm-hmm. Especially Thank if you. you're feeling stuck in life, goals help mm-hmm. you feel like you're you're working towards something. Mm-hmm. Right. Like it what mm-hmm. you're doing it's in that clarity. moment. Yeah, and it matters. You're not stuck. You you everything is temporary. Right. You know? That's beautiful. Man, I get so much from doing this podcast with y'all. Same. Like, I appreciate this. I appreciate this, y'all. <laughs> hey, and I appreciate the listeners, too, man. Thank y'all for tuning in and rocking with us. Y'all been showing out on the numbers. So thank yes. y'all for that. Keep it coming. Make guys. sure, yes. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. We got more content coming at y'all. So, people, this has been The Kitchen Table. I hope y'all full, because I am. Mm-hmm. Yes. I'm full and light. I ain't got yes. the itis. I'm about to get up off this table and do something with myself. Hey.
All right, y'all. Until next time. Peace. Peace. Peace.